In the previous video, we talked about the mechanical loading and stress. In this video, we will talk about how mechanical stress relates to deformation of the tissue. Deformation is a change in shape or length of an object when a load is applied to the structure. When you track how much the structure elongates when a known magnitude of force was applied to it, you can create a load deformation curve of that structure. The load deformation curve provides visual representation of the mechanical property of the structure. Every structure has its own unique load deformation curve in response to various types of loading. Strain is a deformation measured relative to the structure's original length and is expressed as a percent change in length. For example, when you stretch a 50 mm long tissue by 3 mm, the amount of deformation is 3 mm and the strain is 6%. Looking at strain instead of deformation is important because 3 mm of strain can be small or large depending on the original size of the structure. If the object's original length was 500 mm, the 3 mm deformation deformation is equivalent to 0.6% strain, a very small increase relative to its original length. As mentioned earlier, load deformation curve illustrates a relationship between load and deformation. The curve tells us how the structure, for example specific bones, tendons, and ligaments behave when the force is applied to it. However, looking at this low deformation curve is not suitable when comparing the strength of ligaments or tendons of different size. This is because stress that develops within the structure and the strain will be affected by the size and cross-sectional area of the structure. As we said before, the stress that develops will be greater if the area over which the force was applied was smaller. Also, the strain of the structure will be greater if the structure's original length was smaller. That is why when we want to compare the strength of the material or the tissue that is making up the structure, instead of looking at the load deformation curve, we look at stress-strain curve, a figure that shows the relationship between stress that develops within the tissue and the strain. This is how the generic stress-strain curve of the connective tissue looks like. The stress-strain curve consists of elastic and plastic regions. The point that separates the two regions is called the elastic limit. When the stress lower than the elastic limit or stress in the elastic region develops in the tissue, the tissue will go through lengthening while the stress is pleasant, but then will return to its original length once the stress is removed. On the other hand, when the stress above the elastic limit or stress in the plastic region is applied to the tissue, the stress will result in permanent changing length, uh, which indicates some level of partial damage to the tissue and cannot completely return to its original length. The slope of the curve in the elastic region represents stiffness of the tissue. Tissues that are stiff will not lengthen much even under high stress, while, stress, uh, while tissues that are compliant will lengthen a lot even under low stress. Therefore, looking at the slope of the elastic region of the curve can tell us about the stiffness of the tissue. The stress at the highest point on the stress strain curve is called the ultimate stress. It is a maximum stress that the tissue can take before it starts to fail. Therefore, you can say that the tissue with taller stress strain curve is stronger compared to the tissue with a shorter uh, or uh, shorter uh, stress strain curve. The point where stress strain curve ends is called the failure point. This is where the tissue completely fails after it started to fail when it reached the ultimate stress. Please note that once the tissue starts to fail, it takes less stress to cause a complete failure. When you look at the stress strain curve, you will see the gray area under the curve. 
The size of the area under the curve represents stress strain energy, uh, strain energy density, or the amount of energy the tissue can store within the unit of tissue before it fails. The more energy the tissue can store, the tougher the tissue is. The width of the stress strain curve, uh, or the amount of strain the tissue can go through before failure, indicates whether the tissue is ductile or brittle. Ductile tissue can handle a lot of strain before failing, while brittle material strains a small amount before failing. An example of a ductile material would be a rubber band, and an example of brittle material would be like glass. Here are the stress strain curves of three different tissues. The tissue A is stiffest uh, because it has the steepest stress strain curve strongest because it has the tallest curve, and toughest because it has the greatest area under the curve. The tissue B is the most brittle because it goes through the least amount of strain before failing. Tissue C is the most ductile because it can go through the greatest amount of strain before failing. Now that we talked about how we can interpret the stress strain curve, it is important to understand that the stress strain curve of a single tissue can be different depending on the type of stress that develops within the tissue, how quickly the stress developed, and that it can also change over time depending on how often the stress developed. Anisotropy refers to the fact that mechanical response of the tissue is dependent on the type of stress that develops within the tissue. Typically, tissues are designed to withstand one type of stress and not all types of stress. Uh, for example, tendons are designed to withstand tensile loading and stress. Therefore, the stress strain curve of the tissue will be much taller, indicating a greater strength under tensile stress compared to shear or compressive stress. Bone is designed to withstand compressive stress. It is strongest under compressive stress, but it's weaker under tensile or shear stress. The strain rate dependency refers to the fact that the tissue responds differently to stress that develops at a different rate. Typically, the material response with, responds with greater strength and stiffness when the stress develops at a faster rate. We all know that if you keep bending a paper clip, the paper clip will eventually break. This phenomenon is called material fatigue. This fatigue uh, occurs when the biological tissues are subjected to repeated loads above a certain threshold. When the stress develops over and over, the material's ability to withstand applied load decreases and can fail under a level of stress that is much lower than the original ultimate strength or ultimate stress.